Good Tuesday morning, everyone. Welcome back to Weather on the Go, all your weather coverage. We have storms intensifying this week all across the country in different areas with multiple days of severe weather. We'll get to what you need to know on that side of things. And then extreme heat continues throughout the week with record high temperatures possible, especially across the southern plains. And then the tropics are gaining attention with tropical storm Brett forming across the Atlantic Basin and more updates on that and what's to come through the rest of June later on in today's video. But if you like detailed weather breakdowns each and every morning on this channel, it is important to press the subscribe button down below. It's absolutely free and you get detailed breakdowns on Southern Canada, the United States and the tropics on this channel. So be sure you press the subscribe button down below. And it's very helpful to press the like button, the thumbs up button down below the video. The more likes we get, the more views we get here on the video, and the more people that are informed about the weather pattern ahead throughout the rest of the week. Well, moving through here, the weather pattern for today, we have a trough up here across the Pacific Northwest, and the right exit region of the jet stream is sitting across Montana and down into the western Rockies. But the, at the same time, we also have a subtropical jet down across the southern forest. Four Corners region and into the Southern Plains, and that will bring two different areas for severe storm action today, especially as we have a fire hose of instability all the way up through the Great Plains into the Dakotas and as far north as Southern Manitoba today. So definitely seeing some decent values with the strongest of the instability today down across the Southern Plains and the lower Mississippi Valley. So looking at the Storm Prediction Center's update here, we do have a slight risk for severe weather across the Dakotas back into southeastern Montana and extreme northeastern Wyoming today, even a marginal risk extending as far south as northern Nebraska, and another slight risk down here into far east Texas, Louisiana, getting into southern Mississippi, far southwestern Alabama today with that marginal risk that extends further east into southern portions of Georgia and throughout the state of Florida. The tornado Tornado risk is maximized up here into the central Dakotas or across Louisiana and southern Mississippi today. Places like New Orleans getting into the Gulfport, Mississippi area. And then again, on up there toward the Bismarck region, we have to watch out for a couple of tornadoes today. So this afternoon, we are watching storms starting to fire up as we get toward the 3, 4 o'clock time frame, and we definitely see that. Not everybody will see the storms, but as we get toward the evening hours, we'll start to get a little bit more numerous with the thunderstorms across southern Manitoba, down into the Dakotas here, maybe a complex of storms trying to develop up here, more scattered activity down near the Gulf Coast in the southeast. A couple of these storms could get feisty enough for some damaging winds, some large hail, and even a couple of tornadoes through this evening and into the overnight hours tonight. Then as we head into Wednesday, much of the same. We have that instability pulled a little bit further to the south now, but we see some extreme values starting to show up here across the western high plains down in toward Texas hill country here. Instability over 3,000, if not in excess of 4,000 joules per kilogram by Wednesday afternoon. And there's where we have the severe weather risk highest on Wednesday in the yellow shaded color from southeastern Wyoming, western Nebraska, down through eastern Colorado, western Kansas, western Oklahoma, and then down into the Texas Panhandle and parts of northwest Texas there as we have that level 2 out of 5 on the scale there for Wednesday. But we also still have a marginal risk down here into parts of the southeast and up across the Dakotas, northwestern Minnesota. We will have to watch throughout the day on Wednesday. But the tornado risk is highest up here across southeastern Wyoming, western Nebraska, and into northeastern Colorado on Wednesday. That's where we have the overlap of the strong instability and the wind shear to create an environment favorable for tornadoes as we go through the Wednesday time frame. Then as we go into Thursday, much of the same area, we have a marginal risk of severe weather across the front range down into the western high plains. And then the same thing holds true with a slight risk of severe weather on Friday in the very same same areas here from western Nebraska, down into eastern Colorado, western portions of Kansas, and into northwestern Oklahoma on Friday as we close out later on this week. So looking at the total rainfall accumulation right now through Saturday morning, this is where all the rainfall will be accumulating 
And you do see some heavier amounts up, especially into the central Dakotas, back into western Nebraska, northeastern portions there of Colorado and northwestern Kansas. Widespread one to three inches of rainfall up here. Even some decent rains up into Manitoba and western Ontario as well. And then some very heavy rainfall to be had down across portions of Virginia, the Carolinas, eastern Tennessee, down through especially Georgia and northern Florida. That's where we could be seeing the heavy rains of four to as much as seven plus inches of rain across these areas. So definitely take it easy on the roads. If you see a flooded roadway across the southeast, avoid it and do not drive through flooded road uh, waters because that is definitely very dangerous. But unfortunately, we don't see any rainfall in the middle of the country in the Midwest or Great Lakes through this early portion of the weekend. But I think that starts to change a little bit by Saturday. So we start to flatten out the northern side here of that ridge that builds across the southern plains. And on the northern periphery of that, you have a stronger, more enhanced westerlies in the jet stream by Saturday. And this will introduce more severe weather further to the north than we've seen it a lot of times here this year, at least through June. We have a slight risk up here into southeastern South Dakota, southwestern Minnesota through much of Iowa, including the Des Moines region, back toward Omaha into eastern portions of Nebraska, around the Kansas City region there into northeastern Kansas, northern parts there of Missouri on Saturday, getting into early on this weekend. And here's where the rainfall will be falling most likely through the weekend from Saturday. Saturday through Monday morning. This is where the heaviest of the rainfall will be across the Dakotas, dropping down the northwest flow into portions of Minnesota, Wisconsin, the upper peninsula of Michigan, and then we'll start to drop southeast with some of the rainfall, but taper off some of the heaviest of the rain further to the south and east. But however you slice it, we still need some rainfall across the Ohio Valley and the Missouri Valley, and we'll at least get some rainfall across these areas. But unfortunately, there will be areas that don't see very much rainfall going through this weekend. So we definitely have to be concerned about that, especially when you look at the drought monitor. This gets updated this Thursday, but there is widespread moderate drought, severe drought developing in pockets, even some extreme drought here into north central Missouri and back into Nebraska. Alaska really starting to expand as we get closer here toward the end of June. And it's really all due to this high temperatures um, getting very hot uh, throughout the late portion here of June. So today we have the ridge of high pressure centered across the southeast and much of the Great Plains with an omega blocking pattern with a trough to the west and across the southeast today. That really takes us through Thursday, June 22nd with that ridge hanging tough across the middle of the country with the heat. But then by Saturday, as we mentioned, we start to break down the northern periphery of that ridge with it dropping further to the south into the southern plains. And then we have more unsettled weather up across the upper Midwest and parts of the Great Lakes getting into this weekend. So looking at the high temperatures for this afternoon, for today, June 20th, you do see some 90 spreading up, even into portions of southeastern Canada. That's kind of rare for this time of year where we have low to mid 90s up into Ontario, western Quebec, southeastern portions of Manitoba. We But we do have it. And then further to the south into the United States, the Mississippi Valley, the upper Midwest will be into the 80s and 90s today. But look at the extreme heat down here into Texas Hill Country and West Texas. Yeah, we're up to 106 in Midland, 100 in Lubbock, and 104 in Abilene, Texas this afternoon. Then as we go into Thursday afternoon, many of the same areas will be seeing the heat continue Continuing with more triple digits down here in the Southern Plains. And then even as we go into Saturday, yeah, look at that. Chicago will be approaching the 90 degree mark there on Saturday, if not into the 90s from Chicago to Milwaukee, all the way up to Green Bay there, and even down into central Illinois, getting close to the triple digit mark with the negative feedback of that drought. Definitely you know, can, you know, continuing to enhance those temperatures getting into this weekend and more triple digits across the Southern Plains as we go into this weekend time frame as well. And you can see that continuing as we head into Sunday, but you see the northern periphery of that ridge 
Starting to break down by Sunday, June 25th, we start to cool back down into the 70s and 80s up here into the Dakotas, parts of Nebraska, Minnesota, Wisconsin, and parts of northern Iowa, but the heat will prevail across the southern and southeastern two-thirds of the country as we go in towards early next week. And really, as we take us through the end of June, through that at least Thursday, June 29th, probably even Friday, June 30th time frame to close out the month, that heat will prevail across the southern United States states here with that ridge not going anywhere with more of an omega blocking pattern still setting up shop with the trough to the west with cooler temperatures than average across California into Nevada. And then we have the cooler temperatures than average across the parts of the Mid-Atlantic and the Southeast, including Virginia and the Carolinas and parts of Georgia as we close out the month there of June. And looking closer toward your 4th of July holiday, this goes all the way through July 3rd, and the heat will be expanding again. I think that ridge just begins to build back northward after we see the northern periphery of that start to get eaten away by later this weekend. We start to build that further to the north getting into the first few days there of July and that will expand the heat again trying to expand it back into the Midwest and the Great Lakes region and that will ultimately push the active storm track even further towards the north so right now the active storm track going through the weekend and into next week We'll be up here across the Pacific Northwest, the far northern plains, parts of the upper Midwest, and then dropping southeast with that northwest flow into the northeast, the mid-Atlantic, and the southeastern states. But underneath that ridge, we have drier conditions expected with lots of sinking air, lots of sunshine, and heat building. So likely below normal precipitation, especially for the Four Corners region, the central and the southern plains, including the Rio Grande Valley and Texas Hill Country, as we go through the rest of June. And you can see exactly where the Climate Prediction Center does forecast through the long range period, the heaviest of the rains up here into Montana, parts of Wyoming, getting back into northern Idaho and the Pacific Northwest, and then another slight risk for excessive rainfall across much of New England, the Northeast, including the I-95 corridor, and down into the mid-Atlantic states through the opening stages there of early July. So we will be watching out for that as well. Turning to the tropical weather update, we have lots to talk about here. Tropical Storm Brett has formed into the southern Atlantic Basin, and this is, has its eyes set on the eastern Caribbean over the next few days. But you also do see another feature to the east of that as well. It has an 80% chance of development. Another tropical wave is likely to develop another tropical storm, if not a hurricane, in the coming days, probably within the next week across the tropical Atlantic. So currently looking at the satellite imagery here, there is Tropical Storm Brett just to the east of the Windward Islands, and it does have its eyes set on the eastern Caribbean as we go over the next few days or so. And then that other tropical wave starting to gain steam right behind Brett there and if this does get formed that would be called tropical storm or hurricane Cindy so we'll definitely be able to uh, continue to watch this over the next few days and here's the EPS. This is the European Ensemble Guidance. Usually does fairly well with tracking these patterns here over the next several days. So this is today. There's Tropical Storm Brett here. There's the high pressure system that with that Bermuda High steering all of this further to the west and the west-northwest over the next few days. And then as we get into Thursday, Tropical Storm Brett possibly strengthening to a hurricane starts to get towards the Windward Islands there and Puerto Rico. So we definitely have to keep an eye on that getting through later on this week and then right on its heels that could be the, our new development of Tropical Storm, if not Hurricane Cindy, that develops there right on its heels in the tropical Atlantic area, the MDR, the main development region, as we call it. And then as we see into this weekend, Tropical Storm or Hurricane Brett moves into the Caribbean and goes over the uh, Puerto Rico region potentially. And then right on its heels, this one looks to go a little bit further to the north and west and miss most of the islands here, the Lesser Antilles and Puerto Rico. We still have to keep an eye on this because it is several days out, but right now it has the Bermuda high pressure system building further to the north, which would actually steer this a little bit further north and a little bit away from land as we go into this upcoming weekend. And by Monday, it has it well to the north and east of the Windward Islands with Cindy developing as we go towards early next week and looking at the water content here it is very warm it's boiling warm in fact across the tropical atlantic 
the Caribbean and parts of the Gulf. So if we have Brett moving into the Eastern Caribbean, there is plenty of warm water. So we definitely have to watch Brett first, but then Cindy develops and we definitely have to watch this and see where that goes because the waters are warm. So wherever any of these two systems go, they will have a lot of fuel to continue to grow and intensify over the next several days. And now looking at the Eastern Pacific side, there is a 20% chance, a very low probability of a tropical depression or storm here just off the coast of Mexico down here over the Eastern Pacific Basin. We'll continue to watch over the next several days there. And we also have to watch this here because the water temperatures in the Eastern Pacific are just as warm, if not warmer, than the tropical Atlantic here as well. So we'll continue to watch all these systems over the next several days, and we'll continue to keep you updated as they get closer and more accurate as time goes on. Well, if you want additional weather forecast updates, including this channel and this video, press the description down below the video and follow me on Twitter at HWeather420. I do post on there fairly frequently, so I appreciate that as well. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching here this morning, this afternoon, whenever you're watching today's video. I do appreciate all the subscribers, all the old subscribers, all the supporters on the video as always. If you did like today's video, press the like button, the thumbs up button down below. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Leave any comments, questions, and concerns below. I'll get to those later on today. And also, it's important to press the notification bell because if I have to go live for severe weather or the tropics coming up over the next couple of weeks or month or so, you do have it right here at your disposal. So definitely press that notification bell so you get all the, upgate, up, all the updates as we get closer towards that time frame. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great rest of your Tuesday, and I will see you all in the next video.